right, tea timers. I hope you had a good weekend. Um, so I'm drinking a lovely Darjeeling. It's not called lovely Darjeeling. I just am calling it a lovely Darjeeling with a little bit of milk. Oh, it's nice and warm. Um, so let's see. Um, what did I have here? I'm going to get my thing. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so here's something that's kind of exciting. Well, it's exciting to me. We have now tea timers in US, Canada, the UK, Finland, Netherlands, Australia, Japan, Spain, Ireland, and Russia. <laughs> I can't believe it. We just were going to do this little tea time thing. And, um, you know, I didn't know if anybody's going to watch other than my hubby, but but this is so, like so cool. So thank you and welcome all you guys from all around the world. Very exciting. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, okay. Linda, Linda V wrote, I just recently read your book, Solace Island and Cliff's Edge, the books. I didn't see the S there. I was wondering why you chose Silsby, Texas as a place Rice uh, Thomas went to school. Oh, wait, okay, so that's one thing. I just called him Rice. Apparently, because when they were doing the audiobook, they, they, his name, how you spell it, because it's spelled R-H-Y-S, and so I thought, oh yeah, that's kind of a cool name, Rice, Rice. So the whole time I, I read it, um, I thought his name was Rice. But um, apparently it's pronounced Reese. So then I had to switch it. So for now, I'm, I'm actually like, was it Reese? Was it Rice? But I, either way, I picked that name because I like the visuals of it and, and it just seemed like a good name. But anyway, um, but uh, I'm not quite sure how it's pronounced. And that happens a lot. I, actually, I'm not sure how a lot of things are pronounced because I um, sometimes when I, I read things, I, I flip letters and stuff like that. But also, I'm just, I just <laughs> suck at that. Okay, so she said... Um, uh, Silsby, Texas, as a place Rice Thomas, Reese Thomas, Rice Thomas, went to school. You see, I grew up there. It blew my mind when I came across the reference in your book. It is not a well-known town. Believe me, I know. I am 71 and I am curious. Well, okay, so here's what I do. When I'm going to, I just, I knew that he was from Texas. This is, a, this is from the book um, Cliff's Edge. I knew I wanted him to be from Texas. And so what I do is then I look and I knew I wanted him to be from a small town. So then I get a map and I look around and then I find names of places that seem interesting or seem like they're off the beaten track. And then I look them up. And if it seems like a good fit, like I look at the population and I look and if they have pictures and stuff, if it seems like a fit, like you know when it's a fit where you just are like, oh, oh, that would work. Then, then, um, then that's what I use. So that's how I chose that particular place. Um, I looked at, I was looking also at, um, I wanted to be where, uh, where a band uh, might have come from and gone to, but far further away from. So I thought that that was um, pretty cool um, that she asked that. I also do that with uh, any kind of location. So I didn't used to, I used to just kind of figure it all out or, use like with Solace Island, I used my um, Salt Spring Island and I just shifted things a bit. So there's a couple places in those books that are Salt Spring Island where I got permission from the owners of the restaurant, like the tree house where they go for a date and it's got the, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a restaurant that's a tree, like the roof is a tree and it, there's a big tree in the middle of the restaurant. Um, so I, I choose I choose things that are similar. If I like uh, Twang and Pearl is on Salt Spring that I like to go shop at. So so there's a lot of things where you walk around and you're like, oh yeah, this farmer's market that uh, Maggie and Eve all go to, you know, this is, or, or also Azealia on the third one. So that's what I do. The other thing I do is I'll, I'll look, um, once I get it narrowed down to the town or the city or, wherever it's going to be. Then I'll look up online, like I'll look on the, um, the for sale signs, like houses and stuff, and I'll look up the different um, things and I'll go through Zylo until I find a house. I'm like, ah, oh, that's the house. Now I might change the address or I might change the house or I might change things about it, but I use it as a kicking off place. So that's a really good idea. Well, I think it's a really good idea for you authors out there who are um, writing. 
it really helps a lot. And another thing I like to do is I like to, when I figure out the time of year, then print out a calendar so you don't get the days mixed up when you have to go back for copy editing, editing and be like, um, okay, so this person works in an office and they don't have a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes, you know, if it's Friday, different things might happen than if it's, you know, Tuesday. So, um, so that's another helpful writing tip. Okay. Okay. So that's curious. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Marcia wrote, here goes. <laughs> this, this one made me laugh. So I'm sharing it with you. I was reading Solace Island at work during lunch today. I got to the part after Luke saves Maggie's life and she is thanking him. I mean, really, <laughs> that's all in caps, thanking him. <clears throat> what an awkward place to be enjoying their interaction. <laughs> it was difficult to get my mind back on work. Um, yes, <laughs> I feel your pain. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying it though. Um, okay, let's see what else. Um, Travis Neeland. Hey Meg, do you think you would ever do a meet and greet book signing or something like that? I would love to meet you and talk. Um, I do them all the time, but not while I'm in quarantine. And I, I don't generally do them in my pajamas. Although when I did, um, what well, was a book lovers con, we did do a pajama party and that was really fun. There's, um, there might be pictures way back on one of my feeds, but um, it was fun because we all wore pajamas and, um, and then I did some spooky music when I was doing, we played a game, Murderer, where you, um, we, where you tap somebody because there's always a little bit of murder, but it's, my books are actually kind of cozy and funny too. Let's see. Um, let's see. Oh, Devin, I'm, I'm getting through these, um, um, questions today. <laughs> Devin Padley. Oh, I remember, I think Devin was somebody who came to one of my, book readings when I did Porcupine. Um, yeah, and and she, um, she sometimes will tweet and stuff, but she has a dog named after one of my books, Gemma. So um, Devin Padley, but I, I don't, it, she's all grown now. So she wrote, Meg's cozy fried chicken time. <laughs> I guess doesn't have the same ring to it, but you have your spin off should you ever get tired of tea. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know what? I, I actually would be down for that. The only problem is being in quarantine, I would have to make all the fried chicken. So, um, well, I have to make, oh, tea. I have to make all my tea too, but I'd have to do fried chicken and try to have different kinds of fried chicken. I could eat it all for sure. I could eat fried chicken. I could eat fried chicken all the time. Anyway, like I'm going on. Um, I would love to hear some stories from Leaving Normal. That film got me through a tough year, my first away from home, and it holds a very dear place in my heart. Ah, it is hard when you first leave home. I remember when I first left home, hopped on the bus to go, well, actually the first time I went to Seattle, I was studying and I went to school there. And then, and then when I graduated from high school and I hopped on the bus and went across country to um, New York, and it took me 10 days. Ooh, that was scary landing in the Port Authority. Oh, man. But let's see, cozy, um, something cozy about leaving normal. Okay, um, there are a couple things that weren't cozy about it. I wasn't crazy about the director. He was um, not one of my favorites. But um, you know who was cozy is um, Ed, Ed Solomon, the writer. He was, he was super cozy and we were friends, so that really helped a lot. And, um, and also I had my baby with me, Will, who was uh, just a little round, chubby cheeked, he had like Winston Churchill cheeks and, um, and he was with me and my daughter and son came to visit, but they had to go to school too. So uh, they were, somebody was taking care of them. That, that movie was, um, after that movie was why I was when I decided to um, work as much as I could for a year, save up as much money and, um, and, and step away from acting because when I brought my kids, um, they, their friends became friends with other people and they came back home and it was sad. So, um, but the cozy things about it. Okay. The cozy things about it. 
we shot we shot in lots of different places and the lovely thing about it was it was in BC which was one of the advantages to it um, so we went to but we also shot in Alberta and Alaska and when we went to Alberta we were in this place um, that they you know the, the picture they have a picture of this old uh, farmer and this woman and it's quite well known and he's got a pitchfork and they're sort of angular uh, it, that's where that that um, picture was placed uh, took place but what I loved about it I'd never been to Alberta and I love the like flat flat plains that kind of stretched out forever and then they're broken up by grain silos which I found really incredibly beautiful and the skies were so wide open because here you have mountains and you have so you see for a little bit but then there's trees and mountains and jagged cliffs or oceans which is beautiful in a different way but there was something so peaceful to me about just these stretches, stretches of, of land, farmland. And um, we were in a really, really small town and I wish I could remember the name of it. I wonder if it was actually named Normal. I can't remember, but it's the, and we shot the scene where my character, <laughs> it's terrible, I can't remember her name. I, like I told you before, once I finish a thing, uh, everything goes out of my head but I do remember certain things so we were shooting the scene where her husband had hit her and she decided to leave for the first time at the um, at the bus station and what you don't know when you look at that because I was wearing I think I was wearing shorts I was wearing shorts and a kind of um, green jacket and that's where I first meet Christine Lottie's carry uh, character and um, and uh, it started to snow. It was the middle of the summer and we were shooting and it was night and all of a sudden this snowstorm comes whipping in and I'm like so cold and it comes whipping in and there's snow all over. So what we, what the crew had to do is they had to, so they had, I had like a big coat in between takes, right? And um, they had to take these blowers and, and um, heat things and melt the snow wherever you could see because there was snow and then it would be time to shoot and whoosh, they'd whip my coat off and and I'd sit down and I had to have um, before I would shoot I had to have cold like ice in my mouth because otherwise big puffs would come out and then I'd have to spit out which would make you cold and then you'd have to just make your whole body feel like you were on a warm balmy beach so it would stop shaking and you just have to like fill yourself and your body with heat and then and then do the lines. And then the minute the scene was over, whoosh, back on goes the coat da, 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 and you're so cold. And they had those warm hand warmers in the pockets and everything like that. Um, that was, it was really cold. But another thing that I, I remember and I've carried with me that's very cozy about that movie was there was, we were, you know, they had a little to the motel, they had a little uh, diner attached to it. It was part of the motel and it was a real, I mean, we were in the middle of nowhere and the, and the crew and the cast, they were all complaining because they were like, oh man, when are we gonna leave this place? But I did not wanna leave because that place had the best pie, like the best homemade pie. So I would go and I'd have, I would, if, I, if they were open, like if I had a later call, I would go and I'd have pie for breakfast. And if it was, uh, um, if it was, you know, if I got home early enough and the place wasn't shut, I'd have pie a la mode, you know, with a splodge of, um, vanilla ice cream on it and they had all different types but what I loved about it was the pie crust was so tender and so flaky and it was just the best 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 pie I ever had so on our last day I was really sad because I was having pie at least you know at least once a day sometimes twice a day and um because you know pie it's got fruit in it so it's actually quite healthy you know, that's what I told myself. It's got the fruit and you've got the protein because you've got the ice cream. So there's milk and ice cream. And um, and then you've got the flour. So you're kind of hitting all your food groups. Uh, so, oh, I wish I had a piece of pie now. Maybe I'll make some pie later. So um, on the last day, I worked up my courage and I thought she probably won't give it to me because, you know, it's a, probably an old family recipe that's been handed down after generation and generation but I worked up my courage and on the last day I said um excuse me and I know I understand if you aren't able to but um if you'd be willing to share your pie recipe because I had made pie but they just weren't as good the crust just wasn't and she said oh it's tender flake and I said yes yes 
The flake is very tender. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, it's so tender and flaky and I love it. Um, but would it be possible to get the, the, the recipe? And she said, oh, honey. And she went to the back and she pulled, came back out and she had this, um, this chunk of like tender flake lard <laughs> and she just plopped it down on the counter and she said, it's this, I just used the recipe on the back. And I was like, are you kidding me? I didn't even know there was such a thing as that. Cause you know, I'd always done oil or butter or tried lots of different things. So I, after that, I just made my pie crust with tender flake lard and they were always so tender and flaky and delicious. And, um, and I, I just, I just loved it. So, so that's something cozy that that movie gave to me. It's funny when you guys ask me about my movie thing and it's not usually, oh, I got to work with this great actor or this one or that one other than, you know, there's a couple. It's more like, oh, and then I found this really good food. <laughs> you can tell where my heart is. Okay, so I hope you guys all have a wonderful time and, and hello all of you around the world and um, we'll talk in a couple days on Thursday. Bye-bye.